I think that's just part of almost like evolution, isn't it? Yeah. We learn as from people who have made mistakes, mistakes before us, whatever. I think that I went into my 20s and 30s going, you know what, fuck that, that's not going to happen to me. You can't overdo it. You've got to realise that you are human, that you do have a breaking point at some point. If I can empower the people around me to do what they need to do, mm -hmm. I don't need to worry about it. This is the Mastermind for Business podcast. And in this episode, we're going to talk about balance. If you are struggling to get the balance between family and your business, then you're in the right place. Let's get that underway right now. If you want more time, money, freedom, and have a business that's not reliant on you, then you're in the right place. Each week, Mark Creeden, along with some of the very best business minds in the world, will take you through simple, practical steps you can take to create the business you always wanted. From his own practical experience, Mark will show you how to work less, make more, and get the business you always wanted, the one that you deserve. Now here's your host, one of Australia's most sought after business coaches, Mark Creedon. Hi, I'm Mark Creedon. Welcome to the latest edition of the Mastermind for Business podcast. Joining me in the chair as always is Nick. Good morning. Good morning, mate. Good to see you. This episode, I want to talk about the balance between family and business because a lot of the people, if not most of the people listening to this podcast, are trying to walk that tightrope. And it is a tightrope, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Right, between, you know, how do you get to the point where um, – where you get to run your business. If you've got kids, your kids still know who you are or fur babies, you know, you don't have to run a lamb chop around your neck so the dog doesn't bite you when you get home because it doesn't know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. And let's be serious. I mean, if for some some of the people listening to this program now, um, their fur babies are their family. So that's a really important consideration. Sure. Yeah, definitely. And I think they, everything like that takes time and effort and energy that you need to disperse. Yep. Throughout a million different things. Yeah, 100%. Um, and finding that juggle and, and managing the juggle is probably the biggest part of it, I feel. So speaking about fur babies, let me share a little story with you. Mm. Uh, Caroline, my wife, business partner, boss, yes. all those things, right? Fur baby. No. Right. She, um, her little dog, Hugo, little West yes. Highland Terrier, a Westie, had to go and have his teeth cleaned. And this weekend he had to have general anaesthetic. And when we picked him up, it was quite funny because you know, the vet said, oh, look, he'll, he'll be like he's drunk, right? So I got him out of the car at home. He had no idea where the front gate was. He, he started to walk in the other direction. I'm going, Hugo, buddy, come back this way. You know, he's going, like he's going. It was like me at about you know over the shop. one o'clock on a Saturday morning. He had no idea where he was. So, But anyway, during the night, obviously Caroline was a bit worried. But oh, I got this, I got, I got man flu, Nick. Mm. Right. Yes. You know it's real and it's serious. I did hear, did hear yeah. something along those lines, yeah. So I two o'clock in the morning, I was, you know, up, coughing, barking, coughing up a lung. And Caroline woke up and I said, she said, are you all right? And I went, yeah, yeah, I, I feel terrible. I feel like crap. And I heard. <laughs> so within 30 seconds, she was back asleep again. Sounds about right. Right. Next minute, she Hugo. She really cares. Hugo. She just cared more about her sleep, that's all. Well, right, well, even more, <laughs> Hugo moved a tiny little bit in his bed Next minute, she's up out of bed. Oh, Hugo, you okay? You okay? <laughs> Here, do you want me to lift you up and put you up on the bed? Of course, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Well, as long as you know where you sit in the pecking oh, order. Clearly, I absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely 100% do know where I stand. Let's talk about getting balance right. Because I think, mate, that, like, let's go back, for those who don't know, we're father and son. Um, but if I go back to my early days in my career and early days as a, as, as a father, I thought, I was getting it right, but I think in lots of ways I got it fucking horribly wrong because I believed that the best thing that I could do in terms of balance was just to work more. And the more I worked, the more I'd be able to provide to you guys. Yep. So the harder I worked, even though it was a sacrifice, uh, I worked on the basis that if it meant that your mum could spend more time with you and, for example, you know, that say maybe that she didn't have to work or didn't have to work full time and I could carry all of that burden... And I would, you know, I would go to work, I'd come home and I'd do things at home. But for me, it was very much focused on career. And, you know, let's be brutally honest, there was an element of ego associated to that as well. Sure. I wanted to achieve certain things in my career. I honestly believe that was the right way to go at the time. Do you know? Yeah, and I think that's what most people would... There's one of those 
sayings I've got on. I, I won't get it right, but you know, we always I feel try and just do a little bit better than our own fathers. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? Yeah. So I know that you spoke about your dad, yep. my pa. Yep. And you know how your life was like with him growing up. Yep. Um, and that, you know, there were things that he did that you said that you would never do. And there's changes that you make. I think that's just part of almost like evolution, isn't it? Yeah. And we learn as from people who have made mistakes, mistakes before us or whatever. Yeah. And I think as a parent too, and this sounds like a parenting podcast rather than a business podcast, <laughs> but I'm absolutely certain it's resonating with people listening now, oh, mums and dads. Yeah, right? definitely. I think that what you do is you, as a parent, you happily make the mistakes in the hope that your kids then won't need to make them. Yeah. You reflect on those mistakes and you share those mistakes in the hope. And as you get older, you look back on those mistakes and you realise that, that they were, in fact, mistakes. And then I think you then try and guide your children. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes I find it funny and I think it's um, more common in, in men than women, in my opinion. But you notice as some men get older, they tend to be a lot better grandparents than they do parents oh is that your polite way of saying you, i'm a better pa than i was a dad <laughs> oh well, look you know i wasn't gonna say that loud you said it not me um no, you, the, you alluded to it oh, i think it's honestly very true we take a lot longer to mature maybe we take a lot longer to realize priorities yeah if that makes sense it's funny you know nick i, I grew up in we weren't we weren't you know a wealthy family and there were lots of things that we couldn't do and there were things that impacted on my life a lot around the fact that we couldn't afford things. Opportunities that I wanted to explore that my parents at the time said to me, you can't explore that because I don't know that we'll be able to afford it. Scholarships and, and all sorts of things. Sure. And I think that I went into my 20s and 30s going, you know what, fuck that, that's not going to happen to me. I'm not doing that. I, I am yeah. not doing that. I am yeah. not going to be able to say to my kids, no, no. You can't apply for that scholarship because I don't know that I'll be able to afford to pay for it. So my sole purpose was to then go, right, how do I put ourselves in that position? I mean, you know, right royally screwed it up in the end, but that was never the intention. That's true. But, yeah, I, I, know, I know what you mean. I think that's sort of exactly what I was saying before and I, I think I've taken a, a huge part of that from you that not not the, the burden but the responsibility of, of making sure that um, – yeah, You know, my kids don't have to, to go through those sort of things. I necessarily didn't have everything either or, or, yep. or, or, or have everything I, I wanted or you know, needed to do or have everything that my friends had or yep. whatever it was or have the nice house and all that sort of stuff. Of course, my drive is there to, to achieve those. But where I guess my mentality is probably a little bit different to what yours was at my age is that I have seen that, that the sacrifice and the effort that took from you and the time that took from you and where I have then gone, well, you know, where, where you said, I'm not going to have this for my kids. I'm going to make sure that I have everything and be in a position where they have everything that they want, need, etc. Yep. I've gone, well, I'm going to make sure that I have, am giving them all the time yeah. that I possibly can. Yep. Um, and that's where my priority sits. And just below that yep. sits, I need to make sure that I can provide everything for them that they want and need. Yeah. Um, so, so, so finding that juggle is extremely hard, but there's one thing that I don't ever let the one just below the top one get in the way. Yeah. I think as much as, you know, it's, it's, it's great for, for the kids to, to have everything they need and everything that they want in life and, um, to have every opportunity and not to be limited by financials or anything like that. Um, I think the time that I can spend with them is something that I'm not willing to sacrifice. So, you know. And, but but is it is it easy? No. Well, I mean, either way, it's hard, right? Oh, of course. The, right. Either yeah. way, there's 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 a price to no pay. Which way you want to go about it? Yeah. But of course, you know, I wasn't much older than you are now when I crashed and burned, mm. and it took that crashing and burning for me to realise. And this is a quote that I use all the time, and I learned it in a parenting course because after my crash and burn, I went and did parenting courses, right? And one of the things I learned from Thomas Gordon, the PET Parent Effectiveness Program was that kids spell love, T-I-M-E, hmm. right? Yep. Um, not M-O-N-E-Y. Yes. Right? So for me, that realisation and, and so what I've done and, and I, what I see you doing is, is working that balance and that's, I, I want to talk a bit more about how you do that and how you get the balance. Sure. 
because I know for me now I try really hard to get that balance when it comes to the grandkids, which is probably why I'm a better grandparent than I am than I was a parent, right? <laughs> yeah, but like it's it's it, I think also with time, time has changed. You know, in, in my own um, personal situation, I had Eloise um, at home. <laughs> Mind yeah. you, on our bed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you, you delivered her. Yes, I did. Um, and that, not planned, by the way. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> and that was right at the start of the pandemic. So Eloise was born and then I think, gosh, six weeks later or even yeah. four weeks later, it was um, announced as a global pandemic. Everything there were shutdowns, down. lockdowns, all that sort of stuff. Yep. So, you know, I had just recently started a new job. Yep. Um, and then obviously it was at Flight Center. Yep. Then went away yeah, with the, the job was cancelled. The flights being cancelled. Yeah. So I do. I found myself out of work um, at a time when I was going to be a new father, um, which was of course extremely stressful. But what it did do is it gave me the advantage of essentially being a stay-at-home dad for the first six to twelve months of her life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I picked up work and I started my own business, and, and it gave me that opportunity as well. So the, plenty of things came out of yeah, sure, of good COVID. things. Yeah, 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 yeah great to things. To be honest. Yep. Um, but it, what it did do is it really, I guess, aligned my priorities from the get-go um, where time and I wasn't willing to sacrifice the time with Eloise over something else because I missed her. Yeah. Because I had built such a deep connection with her yep. purely just from being with her every single day all time throughout the night. I wasn't going and sleeping because I needed to work the next day or anything. You know yeah. what I mean? I was in the trenches and with her every day, every every living minute she had me, you know. So um, that that really helped me align those priorities. But also I think it's I think it's the new age sort of um, male or new age dad as well, you know. I think, God, you look back 20, 30 years, not many dads were even changing nappies or anything like, anything like that. So, yeah. You know, I think they considered that to be the mother's role. So I think the role of the dad or how we see it, how we see that role and fulfill that role is has evolved. Yeah. And as well as, you know, the mum. And I think that that now is understood that it's it's something that's shared. When you were little, I would not sleep because I had to work the next day. I would share the role. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when your mum and I separated, I would have you during the week as well as weekends. Yeah. I would have to push at both ends but mm. at the end of the day I burnt the candle at both ends to the point where it burnt me out yes so so this is the thing about balance right and I think one of the one of the one of the big things about balance is you know how do you get that balance right um we've often we've spoken about this before Nick in terms of work-life balance and we've said that we don't call it work-life balance we call it work-life harmony because yep. it's about it shouldn't be about one taking from the other. It should actually be about them hitting the same note at the same time. Sure, sure. But I think to do that, I think you need two things. I think you need a plan. Yep. So like a blueprint of what you just said before. Number one priority for me is time. Mm -hmm. Number two is money, mm -hmm. and I make sure they stay in that order. There's yep. your plan. There's your blueprint. Sure. Right? Yeah. Then you've got to. So I think there's three things. You've got to have the plan. You've got to have the commitment to it. Mm -hmm. And then you have a strategy to implement it. Yeah, and then you've got to stay consistent at it. Yeah, right. Okay. I mean, I mean that, that's that's probably the biggest <coughs> one because it, it, your, your life is thrown into chaos so much time as a business owner, um, so many times as a parent. Yep. Your life is just thrown into absolute chaos. So you have to have that structure. You have to have that consistency to then be able to deal with anything, you know, any spanners that are thrown into the works. Uh, John Lennon said um, – from that uh, Double Fantasy album, the last album of John Lennon. You know, I'm a bit of a Beatles tragic, but yes. uh, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think that's just, that's absolutely true. So let's talk about balance. Let's talk about all harmony. Mm. When it comes to having that harmony or that balance between family and your business, I think one of the big things is to make sure that the entire business doesn't rest on your shoulders. 100%. Yeah. You know, we speak about delegation a lot. Um, but, yeah, you, you have to be – there's too many things. There's too many things to cross, too many, you know, eyes to dot. There's too much stuff going on constantly or fires to put out yep. for you to handle completely on your own. And that's what I'm talking about, you know, with that consistency. If you don't have that consistency, when that big spanner does get thrown into the works and you've got to deal with it, you don't have the space – to deal with it, the mental 
power. Yep. You know, you yep. talk about making sacrifices. And don't get me wrong, you have to make sacrifices to yep. achieve that balance. Some days are worse than others, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But on a good day, you're flying. You. You're able to keep up your, your health. You're able to eat well. You're able to look after your kids. You're able to spend time with them. You're able to spend time on yourself, look after yourself. You're able to yep. put time into your business. Some days go great. Yeah. yeah. Some yep. days don't. <laughs> Right? Some days yeah. really don't. Some days you, you miss everything. doesn't feel like there's enough time in the day. Um, so having structure and consistency to that harmony yep. is what helps it go for the long run, I feel, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think the other thing too is you've made a really good point because when we're talking about the harmony, I'm sort of putting it in a dichotomy, right? So it's harmony between business and and, and home. Yeah. But there's, there's a number of elements to it. So if you want to, if you're running a business, if you're listening to this now and you're going, yeah, do you know what? I want to spend more time with my kids or my wife or my girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever, right? I want to spend more time doing other things. Mm. It's not just a matter of going, well, I'm going to leave my business early or I'm going to, if no. you're working from home, I'm going to stop working at two o'clock. It's, it's more than that. And it's, and I think the point you've raised, it's you've got to look after your business. You've got to look after your family. You've got to look after your health yep. and you in the process because if you don't the others won't yeah it's like the old you know <clears throat> you've got to put the oxygen mask on yourself on the plane before you put it on anyone else yes yeah. yeah if you haven't saved yourself you can't help anyone else right so allocating time for your family is one thing in order to do that because like time management is nonsense there's only 24 hours in a day. No, it's there, there literally is not enough time in the day. Right. So so there's priority management. So trying to fight fight against that is yeah, is fighting an uphill battle. 100%. Never so, going to happen. No. So that it's about priority management. So we've got to yeah. go right. What are my priorities? Well, if I'm going to make my family my priorities, then I've got to lock in certain time for them. That's right. Yeah. And you've got to dedicate that time. Now, that means you've got to get rid of the other priorities that would have taken up that time. That's right. Right? Yeah. Which means you spoke about delegation, but they just don't go away, do they? No, they don't. No, they don't. So I'm going to, I'm going to um, take the delegation concept and just raise it up a little bit. And yep. I think that, yes, it's about delegation, but it's more importantly, I think it's about empowerment. Yep. You have to empower the people around you. Now, one of the things we talk in Mastermind about when we talk about team is your team has a really extended definition within Mastermind. Yes. The people who work for you people who work with you, the people you outsource, your contractors, your clients, your alliances. It's everybody that surrounds you in your business. They all play a part in the team. Mm. And so what you've got to do is you've got to empower each of those people to take responsibility for certain things or to have expectations managed in a certain way so you can then effectively delegate and therefore effectively have that additional time that you can dedicate to yourself and to your family. Yeah, 100%. I think if you can, one of the, the biggest advantages you can have is if you can set that up, set that standard from the get-go, anyone who comes into your business, anyone who works with you or works for you, that standard is set from yep. the get-go. It yep. it becomes part of your DNA, becomes part of right. who you are. Yep. Um, and they know that. They yeah, know that's that. right. I was talking to Andrew Myrams from Intuitive Finance recently. Andrew's been a long-standing um, client of ours and mastermind. But Andrew was saying that when he travelled recently, he took, I don't know, six months off or something and travelled. He wanted to play a bunch of golf courses all around the world and had a whale of a time. But one of the things that he found is that his team were actually saying to him when he would call in or email in, they would actually go back and go, like, go away. Yeah, we're yeah. doing it. Yeah. yeah. So the need to micromanage just was non-existent. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we, we've, you know, he's had to learn to let go. Yes, that he's would had, be a struggle for a lot of people. I yes, think. he's had to learn to let go. But I think how you let go is through empowerment and delegation. Yeah. And, and if you empower the people around you and you build up their autonomy, their confidence, their skill set, their capability, if you get that right, then, and they are fully empowered, delegation becomes kind of easy. Well, because your confidence in them and their skills and their ability to do what you want them to do is high. Yeah. Right. So you know that if you're giving them a task to look after for whatever time period it may be, that you know it's going to be done. Yeah. Um, you know, you might feel a little bit of FOMO or a little bit of lack of control, so that might not feel natural to yourself. Yep. But if you have empowered them and, and you've given them the confidence to complete it, you then know and you then are confident in, in, in your mind that they can do it. Yeah. 
So yeah. it, it does help with that process of letting go. You're right. With, with being able to let go is probably one of the hardest things. I think it's your baby. Yeah, right, that's, you know, that, it's, that's it's your, right. you, you've built it from nothing, whatever. 100%. So. You know, I'm always been, you know, very respectful of that. Like even in the dealings that I'm having, you know, with Michael Yardney and the Metropol Group, I'm super aware and super respectful of the fact that, you know, whilst I might be in the CEO position, it's it's still his baby, right? He yeah. started this thing. He he yeah. came up with the idea, sitting in a coffee shop, turned around, saw a sign that said Metropol, and went, I'm going to name that. Yeah, you know, I'm going to name my business that, and he he started it from scratch. But letting go, if you empower enough people around you, because, Nick, you know, people often say to me, how do you, Mark, how do you run Mastermind? Um, you know, you say that you're a better grandparent than you were. How do you do that? How do you, uh, you know, see uh, the Metropol Group? Uh, how do you get time for yourself? How do you do all those things? Mm. And the short answer for me is I empower people around me. Yeah. If I can empower the people around me to do what they need to do, mm -hmm. I don't need to worry about it. Because the other stuff you can, all you have to worry about is... Your stuff. Yeah, that's you. right. That's right. What so, you can be in control of. So as we're, as we're recording this podcast, Michael's off on a cruise up in northern Australia. And he sent me an email just before he left saying, oh, there was this issue. And I just flicked an email back going, bon voyage. Enjoy your cruise, mate. <laughs> Got it handled. Enjoy your cruise, yep. mate. Um, you know, buy the captain's hat, <laughs> whatever it is that you do. Enjoy your cruise. Have it's a nice all good. Mojito. Yeah, have a mojito. Yeah, 100%. Uh, kick back, kick back, relax. Um, it's all handled. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then he sent me a text this morning, saying, um, "Hey, good morning. Just woke up from a ten and a half hour sleep. Oh, lovely. how good's that? Right. Nice. So again, he's empowered me. Yep. I've empowered the people around me. Mm -hmm. It's all under control. We got it covered. So I think that the balance, getting this balance or this harmony that we talk about between your business and and your life, it requires a number of number of things." I think, you know, you'd also be extremely naive if you were to think that it doesn't require a certain amount of sacrifice. You know, like it, sure. at the end of the day, if, if you want to achieve your goals, whether it be your physical health, whether it be your business or, or you know, your kids or what, your family, if you want to achieve those goals, it does require some certain amounts of sacrifice. You know, if you have allocated a certain amount of time that was – allocated somewhere else to yep. spend with the kids or your family or to go and do something, then that time has to be made up somewhere. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? It's not just going to happen because the, the, then the list only gets longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So yep. You know, everyone can manage it and deal with it in, in their own ways. For me, I, I, you know, I, I like to go to the gym and stay physically healthy. Um, so I find the time of an afternoon yep. to do that. So I take the time of an afternoon before I go pick Eloise up from – from kindy um i go to the gym when i can obviously as, as much as i can um and then i you know do the the dinner routine put her to bed and everything and then i spend you know an hour two hours yep doing a bit of work yep yep um at the end of the night you know be eight till ten o'clock or whatever it is and, and look that's not going to work for everyone but what, what i'm trying to get at is there has to be some sort of sacrifice you know rather than sitting on the couch and watching a netflix series yeah. or something Maybe you have to do that, those couple of hours of work that you missed in the morning because you went to, you know, your kid's swimming lesson or whatever it is. Yep. Um, yep. And, and they're, they're the sacrifices that I make purely because, as I said, my priorities are the time and then the money. So I think that's where balance comes in. Yep. So we started this with this episode talking about how do you get balance between your business and your family. And we sort of went, well, it's not really balance, it's harmony. You've got to have structure, mm -hmm. right? Um, you've got to have – or a blueprint. You've got to have commitment. Yeah, you've got to have a strategy, and and then you added that you've got to have consistency. Yeah, I think where the balance comes in then is the balance in what you just said, which is okay. So I've got this harmony. I'm spending the right time in my business, and I'm spending the right time with Eloise and Connolly. The balance now comes in that means that I might have to work from eight till ten at night. Yeah, and like I said, that's not necessarily going to work for everyone. That particular example, but it, what, it, it's got to work for you. Yeah, I think that's the key too because you're talking about you know, you try to do a million things yep. um, and you burnt burnt yourself out. Yep. Right? So that's what you want to try and avoid as much as possible. So if that means that you can only make it to the gym twice a week. Yep. Or if that means you know rather than going to the gym, you can only do a thirty minute walk. Yep. You know, it, whatever you can do. Sometimes it's <coughs> it might not be two hours at the end of the night. Maybe you can only do half an hour of work instead of an, uh, two hours.
it's all just about making sure that you're managing it yourself and that you're yep. doing you're making those little bits of sacrifices to to find that harmony and keep that consistency um and i think th- the other most important thing is what i sort of touched on before is to not beat yourself up when it is a really bad day yeah yeah you know i find yeah. myself just really bad day nothing's happening for me you've got a million things on your list to do you feel like you've actually achieved nothing um you know and there's still a million more things to do i think you've just got to almost write that day off and start but, again. and accept that you're human right yeah of and, course. and and the best laid plans are the ones that go astray yes. so so it's okay to accept that nick i was talking to sam's kids last night izzy archie and, and boston and uh it's school holidays and i said oh guys i was thinking maybe you know next week i could um grab some time and we'd go do something for school holidays yeah and uh, Izzy went, oh, yeah. I said, oh, I thought maybe, you know, we'd go to – we'll go s- to dinner. I'll finish work early and, and Mara and I'll come pick you up and go, we'll go for some dinner. And then in the background, Archie goes, how about a movie? <laughs> and then and then Izzy said, how about a movie and dinner? <laughs> right? There you go. The other plans changed. <laughs> right. And so I'm going, okay, well, I was thinking, you know, finish at four, go couple pick him up, couple yep. hours dinner. Well, now it's probably finished at midday. Yeah, now it's a five hour, Ta- six hour Take thing. him to an afternoon matinee, yep. go to an early dinner. But I think, and I'll do that, Mm. what it will mean, it will mean that I'll have, it'll mean that I'll have more to do, but that's okay. That's where the balancing comes in. Yeah, and it's a fine line, right? Like I said, you know, you've got to make sure that you're doing what's working for you because you can't overdo it. You've got to realise that you are human, that you do have a breaking point at some point. You know, last night was just a write-off for me. Yeah. I had so much stuff yesterday to do. Um, and, and, you know, it got to four o'clock before I even realized it. Yep. Um, had to go pick Eloise up. Hate those days. Um, you know, and then whatever, uh, cooking dinner and and once all that stuff's done, by the time I'd actually settled in, it was 10 o'clock and I'd gone, you know, I plan on going to the gym tonight. It's 10 o'clock though. I need to go to bed. Yeah. So, you know, what I, I just did a 10 minute workout at home. Yep. Yep. Is it? what I wanted to achieve that day. Did I get everything I wanted to achieve that day done? No. But I did the, a, enough to make me feel good about myself and, and good about yeah. what I had done for the day. Yep. Just enough. Yep. Without yep. overdoing myself, without putting myself into the ground. See, the that's where day. the consistency comes in, I think. Cause, yeah. Because because you go, well, I can't do that, but I'll at least do this, right? I did something. You have to. You yeah. have to. If you miss it one day, if you miss one of those things one day, yep. if if you take the morning off work to go and spend with your kids or whatever, you take the afternoon off to take the grandkids yep. to the movie, yep. then, you know, maybe you have to do a couple of hours on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where the balance comes in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But so that's why I think that the big thing that, about that is it's about understanding that you, you've got to have a plan for that. Like that stuff doesn't just happen. No. And then the more that you can plan for it and the more you can empower the people around you, the better you'll get at delegating, the easier it will be to let go, the greater the harmony will be and the easier the balancing will come. But like most things in life, you've actually got to have a plan to do that and not just let it happen. 100%. And and like anything, it becomes so much easier, like I said, once you're consistent at it. Yeah. Once you start doing it and you get into the mode of it, and you, it becomes like second nature. Yeah, consistency is king, hey? 100%. Love it. Hey, mate, great to chat. Awesome. These are the sort of things that we work with with our mastermind clients all the time. If you know somebody in a small business who's struggling at the moment with that balance between family and, and their business, share this episode with them. Like it, subscribe to it. If you've got some ideas, jump onto our socials and let us know what you'd like to hear about in this podcast. Until we chat next time, this is Mark Creed, Mastermind for Business podcast, mastermindbusiness.com.au. Please. In line with what we've been saying, Nick, make Mm -hmm. sure you spend time with those who matter most. We'll see you next week.